Move that the question be now put. I call Maureen. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, I just wanted to make a, a short contribution on part two, so I'm grateful for this opportunity. Um, part two, uh, part two um, talks to the uh, provision to protect uh, existing or lodged applications for mining consents, exploration consents. And um, it talks to the existing permits that they continue to have the same effect as if this bill was not enacted. However, it talks also about applications that were submitted but not processed. And they're being determined, um, so applications that were lodged or submitted but not determined before the commencement of these acts are going to be treated as being withdrawn. So any applications that have been in the pipeline um, and haven't actually been processed are going to be withdrawn. Now, I thank the Minister for her feedback to some of the questions that we have had uh, this afternoon during this debate. But there was one outstanding one that wasn't addressed, and that was in my referral to coal seam gas. And that was um, an issue that was raised with me locally. And so I'd appreciate the Minister's feedback on whether coal seam gas is going to be captured by this bill and be disregarded. Um, I do also want to point out, uh, Madam Chair, that in 2013 there was a visit to the wealthy Sultanate of Brunei um, uh, during the East Asia Summit by then Prime Minister John Key. And he said back to us that this is a country that's national income is dominated by the fact that it has very large oil and gas reserves. So he was talking about Brunei, the fifth la uh, wealthiest nation on the planet. And then he went on to say, we have 18 basins in New Zealand that are prospective from an oil and gas perspective, <coughs> and only one of those are currently being tapped into. That is the potential of the sector to New Zealand that we have just had the curtain pulled down on. Now, when you drill down into it, um, Madam Chair, the, uh, the world does not always, is not always seen through green-tinted spectacles. We, and we don't all have the luxury to be able to do that. Some of us actually live in real New Zealand. Uh, we live in provincial New Zealand, not in the suburbs of Wellington and certainly not in Auckland City. And in regional New Zealand, in the provinces, we make a living by working hard, extracting something, farming something, or producing something. That's real New Zealand. Now, that's the real world, and it's a very long way from the safety of the, Auckland, uh, the uh, Victoria University where the Prime Minister uh, chose to make this announcement. But but by shutting down this, uh, it, this industry here in New Zealand, we are shutting down potential for our country to be prosperous. Now, I do want to make note of one submitter who, in reference to, the, um, to part two of the bill about existing permits, as has been well articulated already today by some of our colleagues on this side of the House, it's all very well to say that if you have an existing exploration permit, that is safe. But the cold, hard reality is that there will be no investment partners who will come and invest here in an in industry that has so much um, disorganisation and uncertainty associated with it. In fact, one submitter even took the opportunity of using, uh, giving notice of their intention to sue the government for $104 million worth of their assets that are now going to be abandoned. So we, uh, we are very concerned about the ideology that's driving this, um, Madam Chair, and especially from a party who has, and a government that has so many times professed to be the most open and transparent government this country has ever seen. Well, we are still to see that realised in the real world. And uh, 
Another ad hoc on the hoof decision that's been made um, is going to have overwhelming impacts uh, for this country. It's going to deliver no benefit um, to the environment. Well, uh, I call Dr Deborah Russell. I move that the question be now put. The question is that the question be now put. All those in favour say aye.